If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual business coach. I am here as always with my best friend in Boquete, Catherine Larange, and she is also an amazing spiritual business coach. And she's also moving, which is why you don't see any books in her background anymore, but that, that's okay. She'll get to her new place and then we'll get to see it all. But today we are going to talk about perfectionism and control. So perfectionists and control freaks, this one's for you. So I, I just have to say, I can't relate to this at all, Kelly. I, I have no, <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> That's not me. More, I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> recovering, recovering. Oh my God. I was the worst perfectionist and control freak ever. Oh, my, so bad. So bad. And, you know, a lot of it for me just stemmed from feeling like I was not good enough, feeling like I had to know everything in order to be even remotely good enough for, you know, to be valuable to the people around me so that they would love me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it was about not being able to trust that people would do it my way had to be my way, my way or the highway, because my way is the best way. Right. There can be only one. There can be only one. Right. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, coming out of that oh my god oh my god for the highlander fans in the in the audience <laughs> we're, we're showing off our age here we digress, uh, we digress. <laughs> it was it was so bad and i it was so bad that when i was when i was in when i was 19 i was working as a well i had been an administrative assistant <laughs> to a friend of mine who was running a payroll company. And then she took an early version of Prozac, went off the rails and like disappeared for weeks on end. And I ended up being the de facto head of the company at 19 years old, trying to figure out what I was doing and figuring it out as I went. And my perfectionism, because I was really unprepared (laughs) It kicked in and I had a 35 year old woman who was working for the company who was effectively doing sort of assistant type stuff. And I would give her things to do. And periodically she would just look at me and say, would you like a cup of tea? And I was like, no, I don't really need a cup. She's like, I think you need a cup of tea, which was her code for you're being a controlling bitch and you need to sit down and shut up until you can be civil again. And so I, that was how I learned in the very beginning about my controlling behaviors Mm -hmm. was because she would do that to me. And I'd be like, do I need a cup of tea, Mary? And she's like, you really need a cup of tea. I'm like, okay. Maybe a pot of tea. You need a pot. Maybe I need a whole pot. Yeah. We didn't have any pots, but yes. Yeah. So it was, it was a little overwhelming. And, and I think this happens a lot with people who are new in leadership And, you know, not just me because I was young, but anybody who's never had to lead a team before there, Mm -hmm. there is this place where you're like, well, they're not going to do it exactly the way I want them to. And it's like, well, that's probably true. You know, you can train them until you're blue in the face. And there's probably going to be some things that they still do differently than you want them to. And that's because that they're different people than you. The question is, is the work still getting done to the level that you want it to be done? And, you know, are you being reasonable about that level, right? Because as we know, 80% of the work is usually fully sufficient. We've talked about this before, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the last 20% that takes 80% of the effort. The Pareto principle. Yes. And so, you know, if you're going to demand 100% perfection, you're going to pay for 80% more effort, Mm -hmm. right? And so not to say that you shouldn't have good quality control. You absolutely should. But if there's a minor mistake, nobody cares but you, right? Well, and and in business, like I think 
perfection is often an illusion because things are moving and shifting and changing. So if you're attached to getting it perfect for a particular parameter, say in, you know, in, in marketing or in, you know, something that does something like a moving element to it and evolving element to it, you're so caught up in it being perfect to a certain state in time that you're actually missing the boat on the evolution of it. So there are things like, yes, you do want to get, you know, a a quality, a standard, uh, um, to a certain level, but being able to know like what, what are those things where it actually makes sense to put in that little bit of extra effort and where are those things where done is better than perfect. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, marketing campaigns, Yes. If all the, the links have to be perfect, the mm-hmm. links have to be absolutely perfect yes. or else the links got to work. The they links gotta have got to work, right? The payment, but, system, the payment system's got to work. Yes. So some things require perfection, right? <laughs> Cause otherwise you're just paying to lose money. Right. But if there's a, a misspelled word or two words that are smushed together or, you know, whatever it, it's, nobody's going to care. Okay. It's not a heart attack. And so, you know, this is where people get, get really bogged down, right? It's like, oh, I have to go over 50 times to catch all the mistakes. And it's like, oh my God, no, Mm. no, no, no. You know, read it, proof it, have somebody who's never read it before proof it. Somebody who has a decent set of sense of spelling and everything else. Although most of your editors these days, days catch your spelling and grammar issues. And then publish it. Right? So you just, you can't be, you know, tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and never publish. Now you can publish, see how it does and then tweak. That's the whole point of marketing is iteration to make it better, make it better, make it better. But you don't want to be waiting to publish to, to get it perfect. So, you know, that's, that's on the implementation side. And, and here's the thing, right? I remember the day that I stopped being perfect. I remember it very clearly. And I was, I was making a frame for a, for a uh, mirror in my retail store. I was, I was running a new age store at the time. And I was very carefully taking this wet paper towel and this spray paint and I would spray the frame and then I would wipe it with the paper towels so that I would get this sort of antique effect. And I was really loving what I was doing. And I went all the way around the frame and the last swipe, a piece of the paper towel came off because it had been oversaturated and it stuck to the frame. And I looked at it and I went, <gasps> and I thought if I pull that off, it's going to leave a void and it's going to look awful. And I was like, if I try to do it again, if I pull it off, then I can try to do it again, but then it's going to already be dry because it was spray paint and it's not, it's going to be heavier than everything. And then I'm going to have to adjust everything else. And da, 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 da. I went through this whole process. And then I looked at the piece of paper towel and I went, cool texture. <laughs> and I moved on. Right. And I was just, it was just that moment where I had permission to be human and not perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, in the past, I would have, you know, sanded the whole thing down or th- scrapped the project entirely or it pissed off that I didn't change paper towels. I should have known better, blah, 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 blah. And in- instead, I was just like, cool texture. And I- that moment I realized I was like, oh, my God, I think I let go of the perfectionism. I gave myself permission to be human. Who knew? Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it- really, perfectionism is about having to be superhuman. It is about never giving yourself permission to actually be human. And since you're moving, I've mm-hmm. got a lovely story about that too. I was moving and I had friends who were helping me. This was 20 some odd years ago. And a, one of our friends who was very disorganized had moved a couple weeks before me and she was a wreck. I mean, like nothing was packed, nothing was ready and nobody cared. They all just were like, okay. And they just sort of put everything in boxes and made it go. Me, I was 90% packed. I was just missing a few boxes out of the kitchen. I was, I I needed like an extra hour or two to do that. And that would have been fine. Well, they were moving the boxes and they were all pissed at me for not being fully packed and ready to go. And I'm like, how is that fair? That's not fair. I was so hurt, but what I realized later is that I trained them 
-hmm. to expect me to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And so when I was less than perfect, they were pissed. She had trained them to expect the her to be a train wreck. And so therefore they, they were not surprised. And so I was like, hmm, well, maybe I'm setting higher expectations than I want to. And maybe I should adjust that, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, we train the people around us to treat us in certain ways. And so that that comes up that way, too. I've been talking a lot, though, so I'm going to shut up and let you talk for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So so I think for me, when I think about perfection, and absolutely 100 billion percent, I'm a recovering perfectionist. And definitely, I think we're in business that shows up is it's a fear of being seen and of putting yourself out there, right? It's that fear of what if it's not perfect and I put it out there and someone sees it and they see that I'm not perfect and maybe they judge me or maybe they like talk about me or maybe they think uh, less of me. And so it's this, it's almost this like facade that we're putting out in the world and we're not able to be our real authentic selves. And so we put so much energy into it being perfect or or our thought that it has to be perfect, that we're, we're not making any progress because we're not actually, you know, doing the things we're not actually putting it out there. We're spending hours and hours and hours and weeks and, you know, maybe even months and years perfecting it before we put it out there and we've lost all that time. So, so if you notice that you have a tendency to feel like it has to be perfect before it goes out there, I'm going to invite you just to get curious with yourself and, and just notice like what would happen if you, when, when you think about putting it out, not fully perfect, like what's the worst possible thing that could happen? The worst possible thing. So is it likely that, you know, people are going to see it and they're going to be so, you know, like offended and angry and judgmental that they're going to form a mob and come to your house and you know, <laughs> burn down. And then there's going to be like this big expose on television and everybody's going to know your name and your face and you can't go to the grocery store anymore and you can't go in public and you have to like live in a shack in the woods because you don't have a house anymore. Like just like notice where your brain goes and you can see mine's quite creative. So, you know, not being perfect had some pretty big implications there. And then what if, right? Like, what if, what's the worst that happens? Oh, well, it's a spelling mistake. Oh, well, I, you know, my hair is not perfectly done. Oh, well, I, I didn't sound as articulate as I wanted to in that post. Oh, well. Yeah. Quite frankly, people's attention spans are not that big. I I'm, classic example is this podcast. The very first episode that got published of this podcast got published by my team and they did not approve the show notes with me before publishing it. And they misspelled my name. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, what? Hello, I'm the person who pays your check. (laughs) Right. And, and, and it was just like, oh, well, you know, yeah, I was, I was not happy because I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, mm-hmm. I look like I can't spell my own name. Right. It's like, that's problematic. And I was upset, but you know, we took it down, we redid it, we reposted it. It wasn't a heart attack. Right. You know, <clears throat> the, the thing you have to keep in mind is that shit happens. Right. Oh. And it happens to everybody. And so, you know, we just, we have to move on and let it go. Right. And, and know that being human means that you're going to be making mistakes, right? Like nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. And the way that we learn and grow and develop is by trying things that we haven't done before. And anytime somebody does that, they're going to do it imperfectly. So if you think about a toddler who's learning how to walk, right? They, they, maybe they pull themselves up on the table and then they fall themselves back down in their little butts. Right. And everybody's like, Oh, like, that's so cute and good for you and good job. And then they get up again and maybe they take a couple of steps and they fall down. But what we don't do is we don't say, Oh my God, I can't believe you didn't run a marathon but the first <laughs> time you got up. What kind of child are you? You're never going to make it. But what happens is that when we get to be adults, that's 
the dialogue that's going on in our heads. And so if you notice that perfection is a thing for you, just wanting to, to, to kind of bring to light too, and and you, you might be fully aware of this, that it can often be a trauma response also, right? It's a self-protective response in feeling like you have to be perfect in order to be safe or loved or approved of, which is the, the, the kind of fundamental needs that we have. Yeah. The other thing I want to say about perfectionism is that when you wait until everything is perfect, the first thing you have to recognize is that perfection is a static state and the world is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. And so perfection cannot exist for more than a split second before the circumstances of the world surrounding it change, thereby potentially making it not perfect anymore, right? So we'll start with that. The second thing that perfectionism does is that it's, it, it stitches you into a corner because as a, as a business owner who's been in business for you know 35 years overall and running this particular business for coming up on 20, right? I will say that my business has evolved a lot in that 20 years, right? And if I had stuck myself into the perfectionist corner in the beginning, I would have felt like I was out of integrity with my perfection if I wanted to evolve the business. And I see a lot of business owners throwing the baby out with the bathwater when they do something brand new rather than evolving their old business into the new business. I've seen this a lot in the last like six or seven years in the spiritual world. There's people just going, nope, not doing this at all anymore. Throw it out, start something new. And I'm like, you know, but you're throwing away the audience, right? How about you evolve the business into the new model rather than just, you know, flushing it down the toilet and starting over from scratch? Because that seems a little self sabotage right? And just so... Just a little. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's room for evolution when you're not in perfection to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right. When you're, when you're putting something out as this is the perfect, the most beneficial, the best thing ever. And then you have to back it up and say, why would I do anything else? And then you feel trapped in what you've done. And now you've got a problem, right? So this is another aspect of perfectionism that, that comes up a little further down the road, but is still no less relevant to what we're talking about. And then control comes out of the perfectionism, right? Mm -hmm. So when we go into control patterns, it's to keep ourselves safe. That's the, mm-hmm. the foundation of control patterns. Mm-hmm. And so we go into perfection and, and that takes us into control. And the control is to try and keep us safe so we don't get humiliated or that terrible story that you just told about people coming to their house and burning <laughs> I just, it down. I made it up, by the way. I've yeah, not I personally experienced that. that. <laughs> yeah, that didn't no, it's, happen it's to me. The, yeah, it's a take it to the worst extreme, right? <laughs> yes. I, I like to cartoon it, right? I like to say, oh, and they're going to come and blow up the house and I'll be there and with smoke on my face and my hair and all singed. And, whoo, you know, I, I like to take it into Toon Land when I, when I go that wild with my, oh, Astrophizing. you know, yeah. awfulisms. Yes. And so, you know, you know, we, we are afraid of that happening. We're afraid of being seen as not good enough or incompetent or, you know, out of integrity or whatever whatever, right? And we're all human. We do the best we can. It's just the nature of the beast. So the more you can give yourself permission to mess up, the more your clients will give you permission to mess up. When you put yourself out as perfect, people get pissed when you're not. I will tell you that for a fact. I have had that experience on many occasions. But when you say I'm human, just like anybody else, then suddenly it's okay to be human, just like anybody else, you know? Well, and and you're also modeling that, right? So when you can say I'm human, but you, it's how you navigate the mistake. So it's how you take accountability. If there's accountability that needs to be taken, sometimes it's just letting it go because it's really not, it's like a nothing mistake, right? Sometimes there is an apology. So, So it's about how you navigate the kind of after of that. And, you know, I'm going to invite you, if you notice that perfection is a thing for you, is to maybe like do something that feels safe to be not perfect at. And so maybe it's the the kind of what came to mind was maybe you like bake a cake and you ice it all pretty and then you just like smash it all up. 
<laughs> like, like you know, like those like insta fails with the sheep that look like you know, like hellhounds or those types of things. So something like where you're actually being playful with the imperfection, and then you're kind of stretching that part of you that wants everything to be perfect to to show it. Like it's it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, his name just went away. I I picked up a copy of Kabbalah and Ecstasy from the Omega Center that had been done by J uh, Jason Schulman, who, who had done this recording. And on this recording, he had this most amazing exercise that just blew me away, which is funny because when I interviewed him not that long ago, this was 20 years ago, and when I interviewed him, my Spirit Sherpa podcast, like a couple of years ago now, uh, he didn't remember it at all. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, but I'm still sharing it because it's amazing. He said that he led his people through a meditation that was basically understanding that God is perfect, right? He's, he's Jewish, so he's using the Judeo-Christian version of God. And he said, God is perfect. God is perfection. He said, so the only thing that we as humans have to give to God is our imperfections. And those are the things that he values most mm -hmm. because it is the thing that he does not have, right? And allows him to know himself in different ways. Yes. It's that expansion of consciousness. Right. Yeah. And I thought that was such a beautiful image. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, it was so freeing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, a lot in the Judeo-Christian construct, they, they're like, oh, no, you have to be without sin. You have to, you know, da, 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 blah, 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 all the stuff about perfection. And, you know, we're, we're born sinners and depending on Calvinism or whatever. But, you know, to, to imagine that your imperfection is the beauty in you, right? So it's that walking in beauty concept from Native American traditions is to, it, it's not just about walking in nature and in concert with nature, but it's also walking in, in concert with yourself, mm -hmm. allowing yourself to be who you are, yeah. you know, warts and all. Right. And so, you know, that's to me to really look at that and say, you know, there, this is a gift. It's not a flaw. Right. Yeah. Is, is to, to really come into a place where you can be in alignment with yourself in that regard. You know, and when we're, when we're focusing on perfection, the focus is on the parts that aren't perfect. Yeah. And so from a, from a, you know, kind of spiritual laws, universal metaphysical perspective, what you focus on is actually a message to the universe of what you want more of. So when you're focusing on the parts that aren't perfect, those are expanding and you're going to experience more of those things. So when you then start to focus on, you start to shift your focus to the parts that are working, the parts that you are proud of, the parts that you're grateful for, maybe the learning, the letting go, that's then what expands in your life. That's then what starts to flow. And you know, one of the, one of the laws is that what we resist persists. So when you're in perfection, you're resisting something and that's where all of your energy is going. So you're literally putting your life force energy into that thing that is resistant. It's resist. It's like a big rock in the river. And instead you could just choose to flow around it. So I remember when I first got online, which was back in 2004, and for the first few years, I used to, you know, I used to track all my downtime on my website, da, 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 and every time my website was down, I was having a heart attack at the ISP company going, I'm out of business. What are you doing to me? Blah, you know, it was really freaking out. That sounds and like fun. <laughs> it was no fun. It was exhausting. And I would have loved to have been hanging out with you then. That yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. No, no, no. No bueno, no bueno. No bueno. And every time somebody unsubscribed from my newsletter, I had a heart attack that they don't love me yeah, and they don't like me. And, uh, you know, <laughs> right. I was just, it was awful. And, you know, 20 years in, I'm like, oh, you know, 98% uptime. Yeah, fine. You know, like, and oh, somebody's unsubscribed. Okay, their life is overdone and no big deal. I, I unsubscribe. I go through a jihad of unsubscribing periodically. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's just there's, there's 
with retrospect and with not being in survival mode, because back then I was struggling for every penny, right? And so it was a bigger deal to have my website go down because I was, you know, I needed that $300 or that $500 or whatever it was that might have come on, come in that day. And so, you know, now it's not as big a deal because, you know, I've got the systems worked out. I've got the the money coming in on a regular basis. And, it, and you know, if, if, if something gets lost, well, okay, it gets lost. If they really need it, they'll come back. Right. But there's, there's room because I'm not in survival mode financially and I'm not in, in high trigger trauma mode where my vagus nerve is on fight, flight, or freeze. And, you know, my default, if you didn't guess was fight. So <laughs> like, ah, warrior mode, right. And, you know, the cortisol levels went through the roof. Uh, my health was bad. I was gaining weight, like no tomorrow because my cortisol levels were through the roof. Right. Thankfully I have naturally low blood pressure. So that wasn't a problem, but you know, it wasn't good for my body. It wasn't good for my mental health. It wasn't good for my business because I was pissing off people I needed to make my business go, you know, it's just, it was not good. And, you know, so that's one of those things that you have to be very careful of when you go into control is you end up doing all the things that I did. And, well, and then that's, the, that's also the frequency that you're emitting, right? Yeah, so everything exactly. is energy. And when you're in that, in that mode, that's the energy that's associated with your business. So that's the energy that's kind of going out into the quantum field and people are picking up on it, yeah. whether you're aware of it or not, they are picking up on it. Absolutely. And I will tell a story about that too, because that just happened recently. So June 15th, the, or June 17th, my guides had given me the June 17th date. And I thought, oh, this is going to be the day that everything launches and it'll all be great and wonderful. No, no, no. <laughs> June 17th was the day that everything melted down and it took me into a space. Now I had been doing some work on this previously. I'd been working with several people. My students had done some readings and for my business and the whole nine yards. And, and I'd been doing some stuff, but I couldn't quite put it together and figure out exactly what was going on. I was sort of just percolating with it. Well, June 17th, everything melted down. And I had an epiphany that somewhere back in like 2006, I had made the decision. Now back in 2004, 2006, the internet was new. The you know, internet marketing was fairly new. And there were all these people putting themselves out as quote unquote experts who didn't know their head from a hole in the ground because it was new and people were just figuring it out. But I had been working in it for two years at that point, And I had a fair amount of knowledge and all I wanted was to outsource some stuff. And I hired a couple of these quote unquote experts who didn't know their head from a hole in the ground. And I had to fire them again and say, okay, clearly I'm just going to have to do this all myself because the quote unquote experts don't know anything. And mm -hmm. I decided that was true universally in 2006. Oh, yeah. Wow. So like one of, one of those, and we have these times where we make a capital D all caps underline bold decision. Yes. And that decision is like at every level of our being. And sometimes, oftentimes we're just completely, we're not even aware of it. Yeah. We're not even aware of it. Wow. And, and I had that moment of realizing that, and, you know, I had hired this company to do my podcast launch for this. And I just said the, the first post went in with my name spelled wrong. And that triggered the marketers don't know anything. And mm -hmm. I went into looking for problems instead wow. of being with what they were giving me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that had actually colored everything in my relationship with this, this company and the person who was running it, who was going to be doing a JV with me on the back end, And I was like, Oh, this is not good. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. And I just, well, it, and, and you said it, it manifests in, in vibration, right? So I have hired countless, countless marketing companies wow. over that last 20 years and 18 years. And the, to, to even the ones that obviously knew they were doing well did not work for me. Mm. Well, okay. They couldn't because they couldn't. I was <laughs> not allowing for the fact that anybody would know anything that I didn't know. Right. 
Yeah. And so, you know, I could look at them objectively and say, oh yeah, these people know their stuff and it would work for other people. I've actually become friends with one of the people I hired and we've been, you know, friends for a couple of years now. And we talk every week and he's doing great gangbusters for other people and he couldn't make anything. <laughs> well, he did. He made, made something work for me, but it wasn't what I wanted. Right. And so mm. it was just like, ah, oh, right. Mm. There was like all this stuff and angst that, that built up. And I spent Oh my God, I have to have spent a couple hundred thousand dollars over the last 20 years on this. And I've gotten very little results out of it. Right. And that's because I made that decision in 2006. Yeah. And, and the fre frequency, the energy, uh, the, exactly. it's all energy. It's all energy. Yeah. Oh, and no. I drew people to me who were nightmares yeah, <laughs> or who were nightmares just for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so like, yeah, you know, absolutely. I've, I had a company that I worked with that just could not for the life of them get things delivered to me in the time frame allotted. And I finally just said, you know, I'm going to contest this charge. And then they delivered everything, but they didn't do it all blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I, when I hired this person, she's like, oh, we're going to use them. I'm like, no, we aren't mm -hmm. because of this. And now I'm realizing that it's probably not that company. <laughs> It was probably my expectations because the guy, you know, I, when I talked to him, he seemed very aligned. He seemed very energetically, you know, but I, I clearly was putting out a powerful thing that said, nope, it can't be right for me because I know everything is screwed up when you hired, hire a quote unquote expert because they never are. Right. So then here's a question for yeah. you. So I broke that in the moment is what I'm saying. Okay. So question for you is has has that and just like reflect on it for a minute don't have you know but like has that decision had impacts in other areas of your life has it had like a ripple effect oh that's that's a longer thing for me to think about than to do right here okay. I mean, that's okay. going to be a yeah. sit with that question <laughs> okay so you can sit um, with that question after. yeah yeah but yeah there's i don't know i would have to sit and really think about it, but I will, I promise I will oh, sit and think about it. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, the, the thing that happened for me in that moment though, was that I, I broke that pattern with this company and I shifted the way I saw everybody. They were no longer the villains that I had to control, right? Mm -hmm. They were now a team that were there to support me and the dynamics have improved dramatically, right? Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's amazing. And I, I see this all, uh, all the time, all the time with my clients, right? Where there's that decision that's been made or this belief or perception or previous experience that, that has impacted and that they're unconscious of. Right. And so they're kind yeah. of moving forward with something, but they've got this filter almost in front of them that's putting out this energetic field and so of course that's the result that they're getting because that's what they're broadcasting right right that's the frequency that they're on and so it's so powerful when people can start to become aware of that and to become reflective like self-reflective and not self judging or blaming or shaming but just like curious right like oh well isn't that interesting and High five me for noticing. I'm amazing. I'm amazing, right? I'm a human being. Good job, me. Good job, me. And because the universe loves playfulness, so it helps to kind of shake up the pattern there. And then to get really curious about, okay, so if that's what, what has been happening in the past and I'm not loving it, what would I love instead, right? What right. would that relationship look like? How would it feel? What kind of results would I have? And then how would I be showing up as the woman, as the man, as the person who's experiencing that. And then how do I show up now that way with that frequency? Right. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. All those things. Yeah. So I think that's a great amount of information for today ah. for people to take in. So I think we're going to call this good. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for listening. We really appreciate you. And You're don't amazing. forget. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Yeah, you and are. don't forget that what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one. <laughs>
So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh.